Today is February 19th, and we are here at Zydeco Brew Works. We will be joined by Brian Hoke and Mike Talkman. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. <laughs> Recaps galore, weekly awards, stat lines, steaming hot takes. Your Yankees news with these two. If anyone wants to get me a beer, I'd be appreciated. Wow. I'll take Jake's, we're good. John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. What's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? My name's John Boy, and I am a host of Talking Yanks. I'm joined with Jake, my co-host. We're here at Zydeco Brew Works in Tampa. We've got some people joining us for a live show. Thank you to everyone who came out. This is our second live show but our first Talkin' Yanks live show. So it's good to be surrounded by a bunch of Yankee fans and our true people. Thank you very much. There's, okay. Besides well, that one guy. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys. Jake, how you doing? And then I'm we can good. introduce Mike. James. And yeah, we've got a, a third co-host, I guess. Yeah. He's running the show today is what I heard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the crowd should be f- pretty familiar with him. Uh, outfielder for the New York Yankees, Mike Talkman. How you doing, brother? It's good. Good to be here. Thanks for uh, having me, guys. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming out. And I think uh, we do have to give an early shout-out to Roosevelt, who they're sponsoring our whole spring training trip, and I know you've got... Yeah. yeah. Give it up for Roosevelt. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, it's an honest question. Jake says Roosevelt's. I say Roosevelt's. Is, is it an either-or thing, or is there a correct... Yeah, man. So Jake's wrong. All right, either or, we all agree. Um, <laughs> and Mike, you've you've got a little bit of a relationship with them. They were telling me they were you were one of the first like pro athletes they saw wearing their gear. Did you just find it or did it just get they to you? They found me, man. I don't know. I like uh, targeted Instagram ads. Oh yeah. Sometimes they're not bad. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think that their analytics department is just as good as the Yankees. They just went out and like, who's yeah. gonna be a stud? Yep. And they found them. That's a really good get. And they found us. Yeah, that's a, that was a wonderful. A <laughs> little bit different time. path. All right. How you doing, Mike? Doing good? real good. good. Really I good. know. You said this was your first time really doing this. You're, you've played in front of a lot more people than this. Yeah, a um, couple. But uh, this is new for, for all three of us here. So <laughs> my first question for you is long off season. We know you dug your teeth into Game of Thrones, the books and the shows. Sure. Did you binge watch anything? Did you binge read uh, anything? Yes. Fill, fill I, I watched a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, so I, I did a new season of Peaky Blinders in like a day. It's great. Okay. Yeah. And it was the first time that it was like a cliffhanger too. Like usually it like wraps up real nice. It's very so satisfying. It did not as satisfying. Yeah. This time. yeah. Um, I did The Mandalorian, okay. which I really liked. I did uh, Watchmen on HBO, which was excellent. Um, there's a show called Hunters coming out like Two days on Amazon the, the, Prime. That I think was really the, good. It's like Nazi Al Pacino. Hunters? Yeah, that looks I think good. that's gonna look awesome. Um, what about The Witcher? Did you get into that? So, <laughs> so I started it. I was on a like a, a Southwest flight to Arizona, and like ten minutes in, there was like some nudity, and I was like, okay, probably not the best for like a commercial flight. Yes, yes. So I shut it down. I haven't picked it back up yet, but I oh, yeah. do. I do plan on watching it. That's cu- always crazy that they just show nudity on airplanes. Who's who's the? Oh uh, no, it was like my own iPad. It was like a person. Oh, but I was like, yeah, oh, you can't do that. that. You can't do that. Yeah, I've I've been in that position. Uh, what what's the what's the TV crew on the Yanks now? Because I know CC kind of led the way with that, like R two C two, Game of Thrones, all of that. Yeah. I mean, I I know it was you. Britain was on there. I think Cameron Maven. Is there like a new? TV, Netflix posse that checks in or what? I mean, we got we have some good show guys on the team. CeCe was an all-timer, though. Yeah. So, <laughs> so his presence will uh, be missed in a lot of ways, but that's a big one. Um, Harky, right? Like Har- CeCe said, Harky watches everything. Harky, like, he watches, like, TV, like, in the gym. I don't know how, <laughs> like, he's, like, bench pressing. He's, like, watching, like, he binge watching shows. I've never seen it before. It's, uh, and he's, he's really strong, too, but, um. Yeah, we got a good crew. We got a good crew of TV guys and a lot of uh, 
Britain is sneaky, a lot of shows. Adovino, sneaky, a lot of shows. Tommy, we got a good group. This was your, this is your first like spring training with the Yankees. Last year you came late. I think there might have been a couple days, or were there even? No. No. So is there any difference that you've noticed right away from Yankee spring training to Rockies? Um, well, I mean, first of all, just in um, the Rockies, we were in Scottsdale, and it's just one complex. So everybody's together, one weight room, everybody's together, one cafeteria. Uh, obviously, like, there's a, there is two different locker rooms, but... Um, so it can be a lot more overwhelming in terms of how many people just are there on a given day. Um, you know, but there's a lot of that stuff that you just have to do in spring training that I'm sure all, all 30 teams do. Like, you have to practice bun defense. You have to, you know, practice, like, throwing a cutoff man and stuff like that. And, you know, pretty – since the game started in, like, three or four days, you have to get into – facing live pitching right away. So there's a lot of similarities, you know, on the first couple days. Like maybe if it was – if we were three, four weeks in, I probably could answer that a little bit better. But it's pretty similar to this point. I mean, with the Rockies, you never had to do live BP in the first five days against Garrett Cole. No, never. No, that's a little difficult. It's a little never. different. Yeah, I'm, he's, I'm really happy that he's on our team. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, we saw you step in against him today. You got one. Um, putting a ball in play. On the first live BP, that's a win. Okay. Yeah. Like, I just didn't, and I've never had a live BP with, like, 300 people watching either. <laughs> and, like, cheering against me. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I was clearly. like, I'm in a big lose-lose situation here because. <laughs> Isn't that field creepy, field number two? I mean, that's honestly the first time I've been out there, so I didn't really take it in. Like, like my only focus was, like, don't embarrass myself against okay. Garrett Cole right now. All so. right. It's so That's quiet. It's like 400 <laughs> silent people. It's like, oh, my God. Someone clap, someone cheer. Those Yankee fans are really good fans. They were just locked in. There you go. It's true. It's good. Nice save. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, when, when I introduced you, I said outfielder Mike Talkman. And you, you played all the outfield positions last year, and I think you have pretty much throughout. Is there one you feel more comfortable with, or you just head down, put me in the game, coach, or little column A, little column B? Um, so I think naturally, if anybody – like plays all three or has multiple positions and one of those is center field. I think everybody's always going to say that. You and I grew ball. up, I grew up watching like Ken Griffey Jr. So like center field, like him out there, like he was the guy and I had the swing down and the bat drop and the backwards hat. Like <laughs> he was the guy yeah. when I was growing up. Um, so center field will always be like, I always take pride. Like I want to be able to play center field as long as I can. And as long as somebody will let me and I take a lot of pride in that. Um, I did play a lot of left field in college, so just from an, like a volume inning standpoint, I've probably seen the most amount of time there, so the comfort level's there. Sure. Um, right field is similar, too, but that's probably, of the three spots, the spot that I've seen the least amount of action in, but if they tell me to go out somewhere, I'm not going to give them a chance to like take it back. I just <laughs> right. go and run out there. <laughs> go. So, uh, speaking of wanting to play center field for a while, your teammate now is... Brett Gardner sure. is a monster out there. Oh, yeah. And he's been, what is it, 11th, 12th year with the team and still Roman center field and still as fast as ever. Is that a guy that you see him and you're like, let me pick his brain about this? Absolutely. Um, I pick his brain a lot just because of, um, you know, number one, the experience that he has. I mean, that guy, World Series, playing for 10 years in, in Yankee Stadium, which, you know, it's not easy to do. And to have the level of success that he has – of course I'm going to pick his brain. You know, he's a left-handed hitter. He usually hits in front of me in the lineup. So, you know, any opportunity that I have to, you know, hey, what would you see? How's this guy's stuff move? What's it looking like? I mean, I do that almost uh, probably after every at-bat he has. I, I'm in his ear at, or, you know, talking to him. Um, he does a great job of kind of leading the outfield from center, um, you know, whether it's, you know, moving myself or Clint or Judge or if, like, Tyler Wade's out there or – Tyro or who like we had a million outfield guys have to play the outfield last a year, ton. And, but he was kind of the mainstay. So, you know, I don't think it can be, um, you know, overstated how important he is in that spot. You know, sort of leading verbally, but also leading by example. Did you know? So we talked with Phil Hughes. He came on the show, and he said when he went to the Twins, a lot of people 
were like, so what's Gardner like? Is he really like a jerk? Or because he's got this kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, like red ass. If you like, see him on the other reputation. team, he's, he's walking tall. But then all the Yankees say he's the biggest prankster, biggest jokester. But then also he's the biggest shit talker in the field. So like, where you're like, who the hell is this guy? I mean, he's just kind of like he when he came up, it was just I think it was a little bit different, man. Like you, there was a lot more chirping. There was a lot more, you know, kind of instigating and. I love it. I yeah. mean, it, I, I love it. It's, it's, you know, it's, I, guy, having guys like that in the clubhouse leading the team, they know when the team kind of needs a kick in the butt. They know when, you know, the team needs to relax and have, you know, remember that we're playing baseball and that's something we love to do. Um, you know, how to have a, great time playing baseball, but then also be a professional. Because, I mean, he's ultimately he's a professional, and I've been with him for, like, one season. I've probably learned just as much from him as I am any other teammate. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Gard, Gardy is a unique guy, and the, the Yankees, as a lot of these people know, um, you know, so many of the guys have come up through the organization, and we, we talked about it a little bit on the side, but you've you had one of the weirder introductions to a team ever. If, if the people don't know... Uh, the Yankees traded for you right before the start of last season. Um, and like we talked about, you, I mean, it was after spring training. You showed up, and I mean, I, I don't know. Did you know any of the guys? I, I'm assuming you knew a little bit of the Rockies guys, but what, what was that like? Was it just like a firm handshake, let's go to work? Or was, was it, were they feeling you out, or how did that go down? Um, so when I got traded... I didn't know, like, am I going to AAA? Am right. I going to the big league? I didn't know anything that was going on. And, I mean, it was literally, you know, noon in Phoenix on a Wednesday, and I have to be in Washington, D.C. for an exhibition game right. tomorrow. So, I mean, or, or, or Friday. So I flew out, kind of took the whole day to fly across the country, whatever, get to D.C. the next morning. We had that game. And fortunately... I knew Adam Adovino, I knew DJ LeMahieu from the Rockies, so that at least made it a little less weird, but, right. you know, met Aaron Boone, still didn't know if I was on the team or not, <laughs> and, um, you know, met some of the guys, and I will say it really, really mattered to me, but uh, during batting practice in Washington, Aaron Judge ran over from center field, took it upon himself to introduce himself, you know, really happy to have you, really excited, we're going to have a great year, all this stuff, if you need anything, let me know, and that honestly made a huge difference, but, um, you know, not to single him out, but everybody was great, very nice, but, and then we were taking the train back to New York, and I just, like, got on the train. I was like, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'll follow I'm just going to keep showing up <laughs> yeah. until somebody, like, tells me something, so. That's what I do. Yeah, um. And then next thing I know, I'm kind of just like looking around on the line at opening day at Yankee Stadium. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm on the team. Let's do this. That was it? There was no conversation like to not solidify like, it? Not like, a, I feel like there wasn't like officially. That's but crazy. it was kind of like, okay, well, like there's only 25 people here and I'm one of the 25. <laughs> yeah. So like, one, two, three. I did. Three. I was like counting like, okay, like, <laughs> you know. But, That's crazy, man. But yeah, it, I mean, it was an absolute whirlwind 48, 72 hours or whatever, but. You know, it was, it was a lot. I mean, it was literally picking up, moving across the country and having to go to work right away. So yeah. it, was, it was crazy. Yeah, and then from there, I mean, you, you I, I don't remember exactly. You played for a little. You go down to AAA. And then there was a, a double header where you were the 26th man. And it wasn't there a story you had to borrow Wade's car or No, something? so when I got optioned, the AAA team had an off day the next day because they were traveling to Indianapolis. So I was like, can I just, like, go home? I live in Chicago. So I was like, can I just go home and get my car, spend the day at home, and then meet the team? Um, so they're like, yeah, whatever. So got, uh, flew out that night, got home, spent the day at home. The next morning, I drive down to Indianapolis. I walk in. Jay Bell's the manager. Um, I was like, hey, you know, I'm, like, talking to him. He's like, hey, you got to go get on a plane and go to the, uh, New York to play this doubleheader or whatever. I'm like, all right. And I think, like, my equipment made it, but, like, my bats didn't. But I was like, oh, I left a few bats in New York. And then, so I flew out, got to New York. 
And the club was like, well, I sent you all your bats to Scranton. So I had zero baseball. I used DJs. I thought it would have more hits. It only had one hit in it. But like, I thought it had three or four hits in it, like his bats usually do. But, um, <laughs> but then played, from there, there was no looking back. Played all 18 innings. And no, I went back down. And then I came up for like a week around Father's Day. And then I went back down. And then right before London is the last time that I went up. And that was like, the plane was leaving in like three hours and I was in Scranton. They're like, you got to get up to New York because we're going to London. I was like, all right. Grab your pass. Let's go. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, the whole year was just like an absolute whirlwind. And I I wouldn't trade it for anything. But it was crazy. And that first week of the offseason, I I didn't get off the couch. (laughs) There you go. There was a time where you were like the dude. Like you won the fan base over. You were like the energizer, like screaming when you hit doubles, screaming when you hit triples. Did it ever kind of, like, settle in and you're like, I'm here, I'm doing it, this is it? Um, I mean, everybody knows when they're going well. Yeah. You know, but it was, it was like, I didn't even want to, like, stop and think about it. I was just, like, just try to keep, like, every day just sort of getting that routine because I think that's one of the hardest things to do when you're transitioning from, you know, a minor league player to a major league player. There's not many, like, you know, and this is like a compliment to him. There's not many like Glaber Torres is out there that just show up and they're in the starting lineup and they play forever because there's not that many guys that are that good. Yeah. You know, so most guys have to kind of go from being a middle of the order guy in AAA where they're producing, playing every day, kind to more of a bench role in the big leagues. And that's a hard transition to make, especially when, you know, every bullpen pitcher now or every, you know, if you're in a pinch hit or everything you're doing, these guys are throwing 98 miles an hour. You might get one at bat a week. Like, that's not an easy, easy job. So as you get more at bats, you start to get a little bit more comfortable, and then you finally get to a spot where you feel that you can play your game, and you feel like you're actually yourself out there. And that's a really hard place to get to, I think. Um, and fortunately, um, kind of got that opportunity this year a little bit, or uh, this past year. Um, but it was... I mean, that was a great stretch, and we were winning a lot of games, too, which, you know, with guys like Mike Ford and Tyro Estrada and Tyler Wade and guys that, uh, like Kyle Higashioka, I think, had a two-homer game in in Baltimore. Guys that, like, you know, I don't think, like, Aaron Boone, when he looked at his roster at the beginning of the year, was like, these are going to be my guys. So, I mean, it just, we, we, we loved it, we embraced it, and it was, it was a blast. How, uh, this, uh, this is a baseball dive. Then we might get into some more silly stuff with you. You, you have really good numbers against lefties, and you are a lefty. Is that, do you think it's something to your approach? Is that something you've dedicated time to? Um, well. Or just see the ball, hit the ball, baby. I want to give away too many secrets. <laughs> it's not going to help me. But. <laughs> it's too late. Um, so, like, right-handed pitchers, usually, when you get your scouting report, what do right-handed pitchers throw left-handed pitchers? Well, fastball, change-up, curveball, slider, standard, whatever. And that's four pitches. So I have a one in four chance of guessing what I'm going to get. Sure. When I face a left-handed pitching pitcher, they're going to throw me a fastball or a breaking ball. So 50-50 is a lot better. Yeah. yeah. And if I can guess right, I try to guess one of the first two pitches right and just swing, and it went well. But, I mean, it... I try to dive into some other stuff, too, but the reality is try to make your plan as simple as you can. The more, you, the more simple you can make your approach, the more simple you can, you know, repeat your mechanics or the more simple thoughts you can have in the batter's box, I think the more, su- the more chance of success you have. Yeah, 50-50, pretty good odds. Flipping a coin, man. 100's really good, but we're not getting into Astro stuff. Oh, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Something's wrong with the mic. Um, I, I said getting sillier. Were you rooting for San Francisco in the Super Bowl this year? Um, kind of, yeah, a yeah. little bit. I mean, that was obviously really cool, you know, um, having somebody on the team that I competed against right. yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, let them, let them know what you're referencing. Yeah, I, th- I think most of the people do know. What, what, you intercepted Jimmy G and you beat him playing quarterback? Is that he it? was a year younger than me. Yeah, we um, we were in the same like high school conference, and um, you know we we played each other. My team came out on top that day. Nice. There you go. Good and, team reference. Uh, you know, then Jimmy got really really good at football. Yeah, and he's 
doing really well. Well, because we, so. we, we were thinking about that, and it is, uh, you know, it's, it's a fun anecdote about you. It's going to be brought up forever. And then I was thinking, like, wait, he was in the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. If, if I was the dude that picked him off or beat him, I'd be sitting there like, yo, win that game so I can tell everybody. Oh, by the way, it, it's a good throwaway line. Like, <laughs> take a sip of your beer. Yeah, I beat Jimmy Garoppolo, Super Bowl quarterback, uh, whatever. Yeah, what? no, but, you know, I thought I, – I was I – was, ultimately, I was rooting for him to do well. I do – I am an Andy Reid fan. So oh, okay. I, would, I did want to see him get one, yeah. but – so I had a little bit. But ultimately, I would – Win-win for you. It was a win. I was just hoping <laughs> for a good go. game. I made some really good Italian beef that day, so Ooh, yeah. everybody won. That was, uh, was, Lake <laughs> Zur- was Lake Zurich in that conference? That Lake in? Zurich was not, but we did play them. I live there. Oh, just, yeah? No question. Just letting you know. We're neighbors, basically. <laughs> basically. Basically. From 2000 to 2003. A little bit before my time. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Damn. okay. Damn. Tough break. <laughs> Tough break for Mr. Gray, man. How many times have you watched uh, you rob that home run in Baltimore on loop? You can be honest. No one's listening. No one's. This is an honest spot. I watch it every now and then. Yeah, got um, it. Um, it's one of the cleaner robbed home runs. I watched it again yeah, today. I mean. It's a good one. That's like when I was 10 years old and my dad would, like, throw the ball so I could perfectly rob it and feel good about myself. It was the cleanest, like, you pulled it back, full extension over. It's got to feel good. It was just one of those things where the stars just kind of aligned. Like, the ball was perfectly backspun. It was kind of that perfect height. It wasn't that far over the fence. It's not a particularly tall fence in Baltimore. Um, And I didn't really ever have to deviate off my route. Like, yeah, the ball was almost there. straight over my head. I ran straight back. And it, it just, there wasn't really anybody in that first row to, like, knock my arm away in any sort of a way. So it was just, just kind of like everything that had, like, there was, like, 12 things that had to go right, and they all went right. And that rarely happens, but I'm not complaining about it. Did you save the ball? <laughs> or was no, it I not just chucked it back Yeah, then. it wasn't the last yeah. out. No, no, no. Did Tarpley give you a big thank you or anything? Yeah, he did. On the mound, he was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it, like, it was just, it was just a crazy once in a blue moon type play. I have a question about last year's Yankees. Everyone got hurt, as we all know, and eventually it hits you at the end there. Is there any playing in fear, like, leading up? Like, holy shit, Whoa. it's going around. It's heavy. <sighs> no, I mean, I don't think so, because I think that... That doesn't, the more things you think about, like, the harder it's going to be to do your job. So I think that you trust your preparation, you trust the stuff you're doing, and then a lot of the guys, a lot of, I mean, Major League Baseball players, despite, you know, I know we don't look like guys in the NFL or the NBA in terms of just pure athleticism and like some and, and whatever, but we're really good athletes and guys that are really good athletes, when they try not to get hurt, that's when bad stuff happens. Yeah, tighten when up. you play loose and free, when you let it happen. I mean, how many times do you see, you know, the NFL receiver, Julian Edelman or whatever, go across the middle and take a huge hit and a catch and he pops right back up? Because he's going across fearless, he's loose, he catches the ball, it is what it is. But it's that guy that's to me, it's like if you're playing scared, you're Crocodile not going to be able to, op- to perform optimally. So, makes sense. You uh, was it tough? Like you still made that play, which was cool, by the way. When you got hurt, came up limping, you still threw the ball in, right? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I had to. Had, had to. Job. That's the job. That's how it goes, man. And then grinding your way back to be ready for the postseason, you kind of surprised everyone. It was like, oh. He's good to go again. Same with Hicksy. Mm-hmm. That was just the mentality of the whole season, really. Like, Did you and Hicks have a sidebar like, yo, let's get back? <laughs> <laughs> Looks uh, like they're having fun. Let's join them. <laughs> let's yeah, do we were kind of like two ships passing in the night in uh, <laughs> Tampa because he, he, was, he was heading back up to New York for the LCS, and I think we were, we were down like one day, and, and I saw him, and it was like, what's going on, man? Like, <laughs> you go. He's like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm, All right, cool. Well, hopefully I'll see you. But, um. No, you know, I mean, they gave me, like, the door was open an inch, and I'm like, that's all I need to hear. And, you know, I think with an injury, if you look at the finish line, it's going to feel like it's for, like a, you're running a marathon. 
but I really tried just to take it one day at a time, and it was, you know, obviously super frustrating, you know, sitting in a hotel in Times Square watching us play, you know, the Rangers on that last road trip, or the Tigers, or the Rays, whoever it was, and just not being there, sitting at a, you know, sitting at a bar, and the guys next to me are talking about the Yankees, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, like, why am I here, you know? <laughs> I, I am, it, it I am was one. Or, you know, obviously, like, it was so, it was so great to be a part of um, when we clinched the American League East, but I'd be lying if I didn't say there was, like, a little part of me that's like, man, like, I should, I should be out there yeah. right yeah. now, you know? And, 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 and um, at the same time, it's motivating as hell, you know, to, to go into the off season and say, you know, I, and I think a lot of our guys did that. We, you know, we have some unfinished business. So um, you, try to, you try to learn from it. You try to, you know, better yourself as much as you can. But, you know, think that's what makes our group so great is, we, is it's a group of guys that's just always trying to, better themselves and, 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 you know, be the best versions of ourselves and, and compete on a, you know, given night. Yeah. No, I, I got a heavy analytics question for you. Wow. Rain delay. What are you doing? Rain delay? Yeah. What's your rain delay game plan? <sighs> Ideally. So I try not to just keep eating. Okay. Like I try not That's to keep eating. That's mine and Jake's life. <laughs> That's the 24-7 plan. Um, but... Realistically, watch TV, play on my phone, talk to the guys. Um, you know, try to keep it light, but also, you know, sometimes you know, like, hey, this is going to be a rain delay that's this amount of time, and then we're going to go back. And sometimes it's like, either cancel the game or tell us when we're playing. Right, because, yeah. like, I don't want to sit here, you know, all night. But we were, I think, really good in in rain delays this year. Like, we had the game that uh, Gio hit the homer in Seattle, like, off in, against Seattle, I think, in the ninth, and then DJ won it, I think, an inning later. I think there was another one maybe against the Rays that Gio won. Like, we, were, we did a pretty good job with rain delays this year, which is which is Ra pretty Rain good. delays and doubleheaders. Yeah. 2019 yeah. Yankees were great at them. Openers. Mental toughness right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a, one last one for you, unless Jake has any. We had Higgy on the show today. Yeah. Uh, hasn't been released yet we were talking about how he hit the home run john sterling gives him the home run call uh higashioka the home run stroka it's the best one it's the best it's good, one it's the right best one. it's the best one and we asked him he's like i didn't even know i got one he thought just <laughs> he just thought the big guys got one so when you hit a home run do you know that that's a yankees thing that sterling's going to give you a unique call or do people just start calling you sock man and you're like what so the hell i learned it when i got here like, okay because, you know, I don't listen to New York radio. Like, well, yeah. I mean, why would I? Um, so I, like, learned that, you know, this is, like, John's been doing it forever. And he has all these, you know, sayings. And I heard it. And I'll be honest, my first initial reaction was, like, I don't what know. does that mean? It's bizarre. I don't think he thought I was ever going to hit a home run. <laughs> <laughs> he improvised. And I he was does like, that sometimes. And then Tommy Canely got me on it. Because he just would scream it at me <laughs> all the time. And I'm like, all right. Like, <laughs> it kind of just became like, my, and I'm like, I could either embrace it yeah. and have fun with it. And now it's like, uh, it's like. It's gone. It's what, it's what probably two-thirds of my teammates just call me. The sock so, man. Sock man, man. That's the power John Sterling has. It is. He's, I mean, that's what 40 years or whatever will yeah. get you. Do you is know it, what DJ LeMay uses? Yeah, it's like uh, David John, long gone, and I didn't know that was DJ's. Oh, name. really? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's uh, David John makes long gone, okay. which is just even to, weirder. Just to add to the to be more bizarre. I like it. It's I like my it. favorite bad John Sterling call. Isn't there? Is there a clip of Canely screaming Sockman from after the bullpen? E after every home run, you can hear Canely <laughs> screaming Sockman. So, <laughs> if you've got a good Canely story, we could end it there. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're in Baltimore. It was that same series when I robbed a home run. And we had, uh, they had like one of those, uh, like just rain came in like crazy. I think it delayed the start of the game by like 30, 35 minutes. And um, it wasn't a very well attended game. So, you know, the game started late. Sixth, seventh inning rolls around. I'm walking up to the plate. 
And it, in Baltimore, the bullpen is uh, over like the left center field fence. And there's like two levels. There's uh, the, the home bullpen, then above it is the visitor's bullpen. And I'm like walking up to the plate in like a major league baseball game in like a stadium. And all of a sudden, I just hear, suck me. <laughs> and I'm like, look, and like 500 feet away is Tommy like standing in the bullpen, like with his arms up in the air. You know what? That was his birthday and he had thrown two days in a row so he knew he wasn't pitching. <laughs> so I remember that. He was just running around like partying. Yeah. He was game. like just absolutely screaming and I'm just like, I like step out and I like look at him. Like <laughs> <laughs> kind of busy right now, man. You know? <laughs> but I was kind of, I was telling you earlier in all seriousness, you don't always get teammates who are always truly 100% rooting for your success. You know, like sometimes there's, because in the minor leagues, it's, it's honestly, it's about competition. And it's, it's, there's so few spots in the big leagues and guys like coming up trying to make it. Tommy Canely, whether you're a bullpen guy, whether you're a catcher, starting pitcher, infield, outfield, whoever it is, if you are on his team, he, Loves you 100%. He 100% wants you to have as much success as you can. And, like, honestly is, like, one of the best teammates I've ever had. He's, cr he's a little kooky. <laughs> <laughs> but he's honestly, like, one of, like, my favorite teammates. Because can, you can genuinely tell he wants everyone at their best all the time, rooting for your success all the time. Damn. And that's, that's, awesome. that's honestly more rare than you might think. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think unless you got anything for us, you're good, man. I'm good, man. Do I look like Tyler Wade? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, cut the mic. Cut the mic. Um, Does Tommy Canely say 100 times more words than DJ LeMahieu in, in the course <laughs> of a season? If you had to multiply it. In a, yeah, probably. Yeah. In a <laughs> day, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh. Thank you very much for joining Everybody, us, man. Mike, we appreciate Mike that. talk, man. <laughs> we'll call Brian Hoke up. Brian Hoke to the stage. Brian Hoke, you're needed at the stage.